we continue the discussion on the concepts that are related to judicial precedent of case law. In this particular topic, we'll start with obita dictum or a written plural, obita dicta. That is a Latin term. Obita in Latin should be by the way or in person. While dictum refers to something said. Something said. So when we talk about obita dictum, we're actually talking about things that are said by the judge, chance remarks, comments that are made by the judge that are not on the issue before the court. And the black law may say that there are things that are collateral or incidental, comments that are collateral or incidental to the issues at hand. Now, when the court is is when you get a judgment of a court, it's possible to divide it into two. That's the best way for you to understand the difference between uh, the ratio and the obita. If you divide a judgment into two, you will have the ratio on one side and you have the obita on the other side. I already said the ratio is the reason for decision. You already know that the ratio does then die the, the reason for decision. But the obita are those things that are said by the way that are not on the issue before the court. Now, this is the binding part of the judgment, the ratio the sedendi. While this part is not binding, that's the main difference between the ratio and the obita. And the judgment consists of these two basic aspects. So you find that when the judge is actually saying something in court, he could actually be making an illustration. The judge might be illustrating something, he might be arguing. Maybe something he's doing as an argument. He might be reasoning by analogy. He might be making a hypothetical statement. Hypothetical statement. Or he might be making an observation. Now, for example, the judge could say something like, I'm going to give judgment to the plaintiffs, but assuming the facts were A, B, C, I'll have given judgment to the defendant, defendant. So when he says assuming, that is showing you that that aspect of the decision is actually a an obita dictum and not part of the ratio decidendi. And in the Nigerian case of Salami and N N N Limited, it's a 1999 decision of the Court of Appeal. The court actually held that an obita is also an observation made by the judge. On a legal question that is suggested by the case but the legal question arises in such a circumstance that it doesn't call for determination so in other words even though there's a legal question that has been suggested by the facts of the case that the court is looking at the court is not called upon to give a decision on that particular legal question and so anything the court says on that particular legal question is actually an obita and that's why the obitas uh, anything that the court says on that particular observation or legal question that wasn't called for. That's why I said that obita dictum or ratio decidendi are normally based on the issues before the court. That's one of the few ways of discovering the issues. Like in one of the Supreme Court decisions, the Supreme Court had suggested that you look at the issues before the court. You also look at the, uh, the facts that were pleaded by the parties in support of the issues before you can actually arrive at ratio decidendi. So the obita dictum does not relate to the issues before the court. For example, Goodhart actually mentioned that Goodhart actually mentioned that there are opinions or decisions by the opinions by the court on facts which have not been proven to exist by the court. Facts existence have not been proved by the court. Existence have not been proved by the court or determined by the court. So these are basically things that do not relate to the issues in the matter before the court. Now, one other thing you will need to note about this obita that differences from the ratio is that the obita is never binding. It can only guide the court or be persuasive. Now, the respect that is given to an obita might depend on the status of the court. It might depend on the eminence of the judge who gave that particular obita, or it may depend on the circumstances in which the obita was given. Now, when we talk about eminence of the, of the judge, for example, for example, that 
Obita JSC of blessed memory in Nigeria. Most of his obitas were many of the time seeking to be given a lot of respect because of the eminence, just like Lord Denning was also, it was also the same thing for Lord Denning in England. Now, the status of the courts, for example, is the Supreme Court, for example. That reminds me that in Ifedura and Ume, a decision that was pointed out by Nikki Tobi in his works as a Nigerian law, Federal and others, and Ume and others, Nameka GSC point said that um, an obita dictum from the ultimate court on an important subject matter of law should be binding on the lower courts. But that was a novel idea which no other court has, even the Supreme Court has not followed up. Nikki Tobi in Sources of Law actually explained that the Supreme Court didn't follow that approach because right from England it has been made clear that obita dictum can never be binding on the court. And then um, Wanville Williams gave the reason why it is not so in learning the law. Wanville Williams explains that an obita cannot be binding on the court because number one, the judge might not have considered all the cases that are on that point, consider all the cases that relate to that point. Secondly, if it is a very wide obita, he might not have found out, considered all the consequences that could flow from that from that principle, flow from the principle, or he might not have given a concluded opinion. He might not have given a concluded opinion. So for those reasons, obitas are generally not binding. And then, like I said, what we said, it could be given some respect depending on the status, the eminence, and the circumstances. But I like an approach that was brought in by the court in the case of Chief Adedayo and PDP. In this particular case, on Noyen JSC, on Noyen JSC pointed out that an obiter dictum of the Supreme Court an obita dictum of any court that is based on a ratio that has already been established by the Supreme Court will definitely be binding on lower courts and it's logical that it's a correct position of the law because that obita, that, that particular pronouncement regarding the facts of that particular case may be an obita dictum but already it's been established by the courts as a ratio and so it's still a principle of law that will be able to guide the court that was in Shvadida and PDP then the last case we should be able to look at to help you explain obita dictum should be the case of Eyo and uh, Oba. That should be a 2009 decision of the Court of Appeal in which the court actually held. The, okay, the court, the, it, was a, it, was, it was an appeal decision from River State between two. Uh, kindred communities and the trial judge in his judgment was given a suggestion after he had already finished up with the law he was given a suggestion on how the parties could reconcile themselves and this matter was appealed against and then um, the judge made it very clear in that particular instance that um, that matter was an obita dictum which did not affect the, the it was just a suggestion actually it was a suggestion made by the court in an attempt to reconcile the parties and it wasn't part of it but the court also laid down the very important principle that obita dictum is not appealable appealable that it is only the the ratio decedendi in a decision that can be appealed and not the ratio decid not the obita dictum so you see that it's important for you okay let me before i get to that you also know that a dissenting opinion if there is a dissenting opinion in the judgment that the person, the, the opinion, the, the principles of law in the same opinion are purely obita, they cannot be part of ratio decedendi. Now, having said all of this, you'll realize that it's very, very, very important for you to learn the principle of, of uh, how to 
find out the obesity dictum. If you realize that a lot of the law reports, many of the times in the in the in the head notes, the reporter just keeps on bringing out all the legal principles, many of which are even obita. So as a student, you need to learn on time. But it's something you will learn by doing by reading the law reports how to be able to distinguish between the ratio and the obita, so that even when you're going to file your brief of appeal, you will not go and be appealing against obitas. That's very important for you to note. And so now we'll go to our next discussion, which is the principle of pain curium.